Hey, what's going on, good people? Eddie Gray here. You purchased this training. I know you're serious, so I'm not going to waste any time. I want to get right into it and give you the highest value possible. But before we do, it should be noted that we want to make sure we enable a couple of settings within your Finder preferences. Click on the background of the screen, and here you will find your Finder in the menu bar, and go ahead and enable that. Uh, it's the same key command as the logic preferences, which is command comma. Go ahead and enable your hard disk, any external drives that you may be using. And then within sidebar, go ahead and enable documents and downloads. Take off anything that's not valuable to you personally. And then down here, be sure to enable your computer, hard disk, external disk, and then recent tags all the way at the bottom. All right. My goal is not necessarily that you use my system, but that you find your workflow, something that really resonates with you where you know where every single file is, you feel clear, and you're moving forward with ease. So I've done all the legwork for you. Now it's time just to take notes, maybe even rewatch this to understand the entirety of the subject. Quick disclaimer, I'm not some whiz or anything like that. I just work hard and I'm disciplined and I'm all about the life. Quick word about my setup. I'm using Logic, which I'll basically use to differentiate the difference between a user preset, a plugin default preset, and then a plugin user preset, which are three different things. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I've tried to make this as easy as possible because it's a dense subject, but let's get right into it. Uh, I made a claim when we first started that there are a bunch of folders. They have similar names, but they're found in different places. It's an absolute mess. And so what I want to do here is just try and make this as streamlined as possible. Now, we do have to point out two things. There is a hidden user library, which is really bananas. So if I click on user, uh, inside of this Eddie Gray folder, we should have a library folder that shows up. There's two ways to bring it up. If I go into the go menu up here and I hold option, you can see that it does pop up here. This is not going to be permanent though. Um, so that's not going to work for me. There is a second way, which is not ideal either, but it's hit the key command shift command period, and that will bring up the library there. So I understand why Apple does this. They do this to protect our computers so we don't trash them and mess them up. But for Logic users, we need some of these files. So go ahead and either drag that into the sidebar or tag it as I have done here. So again, I'll hit Shift, Command, period. Go back to the smooth look that we're so used to. So I'll click on purple, which are my audio settings. And let's go ahead and get started. The first of the bunch are the Apple Loops. Now there's actually three folders to look at for Apple Loops. One of them is inside the library path. The other is inside users. And so is the third. So if I go into the library audio Apple loops, here we find the default loops for logic. If we go down the second route, which is the library or the user library, rather, you can see that I've saved that in the sidebar. So it makes it really easy for me to access, I go into audio and here are my user loops. So these are loops that I've created myself. Well, similar file path. Uh, if I go to users and I go into music under audio music apps, we have untagged loops. And these are loops that I've dragged in from outside of the DAW. There's a difference between the default loops here, the user loops, here that you create within logic and then dragging something from outside here and dragging it inside of the loop browser that's going to create what they call an untagged loop you would have to literally drag it into the loop browser over here and what are the benefits well the benefits are that you don't have to create any metadata so if you just want to work quickly and drag in a snare from splice or from initial audio or something you can do that so here are three different locations, very important to note to tag. And again, I'm not expecting you to set this up the way that I am, but I do think it's important to look at all this stuff. Um, I did say there were two things 
I just remembered that. So you have a hidden user library, but there's also a preference folder, which for whatever reason is not popping up for me, uh, but it is within the user library or the hidden library, and it's right here, preferences. Now you can see I've tagged it, but for whatever reason, it's just not wanting to pop up within this setting here. So anyway, if I go back and hit command bracket, I go into preferences. This is very important if you're trying to delete either the um, .logic10 plist file or the control surfaces file here. So this is for your preferences. This is for your control surfaces. So if anything starts to act weird with either logic or the control surfaces, this is something that I would consider. Back it up first, see how logic works. But then if you need to bring it back in, you can always return back to zero and start over again. So that's that. Let's look at application support. Application support is also kind of a tricky one. Uh, I believe there is actually three locations. And uh, don't ask me how I got to all this stuff, but it's just been a wild ride here. So there's three locations, and some of them we can tag, and some of them we can't put inside of the sidebar. So this is why it looks the way it does. All right, so the first can be found, and let me just do it in this order, because I want to get used to this idea of there being the main library, and here is application support. I can't tag it, but it looks like we can drag it into the sidebar. Uh, if I go into the Arturia folder, you can see documentation, things like that. So anyway, if you ever need this folder, this is where it is. We go into the second path. This is the user library path. So I'll click right below here. And if I go to the very top, we've got application support. And here we have presets. So let's get into this whole concept. If I go into Acon Digital, they have some great plugins I really like, and I create a user preset or I load a user preset, what will happen here is it'll tell us where this is coming from. And you can see that it's directly coming from application support, Acon Digital. And I'll just create a dummy file here, and you should be able to see it pop up right there. This is a .xml file. So that is what we would call a plugin user preset, right? Uh, not to be confused with the outer shell that is the logic stock user preset. So there's that to think about as well. So anyway, three application support uh, files. Let's carry on. So that was application support. We have applications, but there's, there's two of these actually. So if I go into uh, the main frame or the main brain of the computer, there is an applications folder here. I'm not necessarily able to tag it within the uh, Apple tag system, but I am able to drag it here. And so of course we have all of the apps that we've bought, software products that we've bought. If I look at the second applications folder, it's simply just a hardware driver. Not sure why it is here and if it really has any particular usage but anyway there we go we've got two applications folder uh, you can see how this could be really confusing especially when you first start this training is definitely very very important we have two audio folders and one of them comes from the main path and one of them comes from the user path so let's check this out the main path has the apple loops super important we have plugins which contains your components very important when dealing with either a corrupt component. If you want to take out plugins from your system, you could do that there. And then we have presets in here as well. So why these plugin companies don't have everything joined together, I don't know, but I just want to give you the heads up. This is where this is. So the second audio folder is under users. You go into your name, go into the hidden library folder, which I've brought over here on the sidebar, go under audio, and now we have a similar looking folder path, but this time I have the user loops, all right? And then on top of that, I have user plugins, which seems to be a ghost town. I think this used to be important in the past. And then we have user presets. So when you create a preset inside of Logic, in fact, let's just do it right now with the click, I'm gonna create a preset, not here, but up here. Here, and I'll call this test. Look at what happens. 
it is right there this is called a dot au all right let's reset this audio music apps all right both of these seem to be within the users folder so let's click here and the first one is under shared under the music folder there is audio music apps seems like we have some stuff here from ssl and the second one is under users eddie gray music audio music apps now this one is very important you want to make sure you tag this one here we have articulation settings which is really important uh, for logic pro power users that really want to create authentic sounds particularly in the world of orchestral uh, bookmarks really important if you don't see this folder because you haven't created a bookmark within logic pro i have videos on the channel check that out if you need to channel strip settings i talked about this in the last video very important plug-in settings really important but we'll get to it in a second we also have project templates and here are the untagged loops which we were referring to a little earlier all right outside of that we've already seen bookmarks channel strip settings we've seen both of the components folders now let's look at documents so they're both under users so let's click there one of them is under users shared and when we look at this we see that there are user presets for united plugins really amazing but again not sure why they decided to put all their presets here i see a world where you can actually move these and you can have them locate within the plugin but again i'm at this point in my life where i need to keep things simple um, anyway the other documents folder is the one that you've seen before which is this one uh, and that's inside of users your name and this is going to have different things. I see presets uh, for some companies. I see samples for some companies. Here is um, Fab Filter. And if we look at the Q3, here are all of the various presets. Let's see if I can corroborate that. Yeah, so if I click here, for example, there's the flat five. Let's see if I could find that here, flat five. All right, that is that. This is not uniform. This is not dentistry. So unfortunately, um, we're not going to have like that much structure, but it is what it is. Uh, the library paths, we know that there's two of them to be sure. So inside of users, uh, we know about the hidden user library here, but there's actually another one within shared. Um, this is where we have the application support. So you can see why I wanted to do this training. There's just so many different file paths and I just wanted to get clear on where everything was. And so when I got this new computer, I just decided to, to finally put this behind me. So I hope this is helping you. Let's see here. We have logic folders. One of them is under application support. So let's go there first. If I go to the main computer library, application support logic this is where we have alchemy samples looks like we have channel strip settings plugin settings all sorts of important stuff now what are the difference between these channel strip settings and the other channel strip settings well these are default to logic this is what they're using to build the whole program right whereas the other settings you're creating all that info all of the factory samples that you're hearing inside of sampler everything is here the other file path is inside of users music it's important to understand that because this is where logic is going to save every file by default unless you designate that it goes somewhere it's going to basically be sent to this logic path here users your name music so that's obviously super important to know as well all right, let's look at these music folders. Some of these we've already kind of seen. Uh, let's see, inside of users, inside of shared, there's a music folder here. All right, doesn't seem too important. Uh, there's another one right here that we just talked about, but there's a bunch of other stuff in here as well. It looks like newfangled audio has presets in here, so that's a little bit confusing. But yeah, you'll find it. You'll get used to it. And then there's one more uh, because there's a folder within a folder called music. So just be clear on that. All right. So after music, uh, we've seen patches. So that's good. But I do want to look at these plugin settings. Uh, the plugins are where you're going to find the components. So we've gone over that. Presets are found all over the place, not just within these two folders. 
Uh, but plugin settings, let's look at that. So under the main frame or the main brain, we're going to go to library application support under, I'm going to click L to get logic. All right, so this is important. We want to make sure that the plugin settings for logic are right here, right? This is all the information inside of Alchemy presets, all default to logic. The user stuff is going to be found here under music audio music apps plugin settings and that's really the main difference for example if i go find an eq and create a test you can see that that is going to show up as a dot preset file or pst file so just be aware of that i hope this is encouraging you uh, again i don't have all of this sorted out just doing the best I can here and just kind of breaking it down day by day. These preset files are going to be unique to the library path and the user path. So let's take a look at those. If I go here, library audio presets. All right, we see presets by various companies. All right, let's continue on. We got project templates, but one of them has to do with the presets that you make yourself, and one of them has to do with uh, what Logic is offering uh, just by default. So let's go to, again, mainframe, let's go to library, let's go to application support, Logic is right here, project templates. This has an orchestral.logic file, so we can check that out later. Uh, but then right below that, let's look at the user path so here's users, Eddie Gray, music, and then under the audio music apps, we have the project templates here. And these are templates that I'm creating for my system. So uh, this is equivalent to coming over here somewhere, uh, file, save as template, and this is where you save all of that pertinent information. Okay, let's look for the last ones here. Um, so we've looked at everything thus far. I do think that there's an important folder called shared that you're going to have to be able to access from time to time. So if I go into the users file path, shared has a bunch of information. If you're a native instruments collector, there's a bunch of stuff that's stored here, but also stored within the, uh, documents folder as well. So just be hip to that. So Hopefully this gives you a better sense of how to look for plugins. Um, I believe these are all the plugins that you're going to need. Uh, before you go, I do want to share just one more document that I find to be important that I've been playing with. Um, this seems to be all the different places where you can find either manufacturer presets or user presets down here. So be sure to take a screenshot if you want to do your own investigation. And I won't be surprised if you find a file path or two that are not contained within this list. But again, it's very easy. You're either looking within the main computer or you're looking within the user path. So with this first one, uh, we're looking at the main computer. We're looking at library, audio, and then presets. And we've seen a couple of presets here. All right. The one right below that looks like it's a user path and they have manufacturer presets. Why? I don't know. But let's look at it, users. This is the user library. I have that shelved here uh, under application support. Here we have some manufacturer presets. So we did this example earlier with Acon Digital, I believe, where we created a test file. But let me just be sure here if I save user preset, uh, application support, is that the same? Yeah, so this is the same file path here. So anyway, go ahead. Finish off this research, tag everything accordingly so you know where everything is, put stuff in the sidebar that you want to go ahead and access from time to time. And if there's anything else you need, hit me in the comments. This is not something that happens overnight. Keep pushing, keep evolving. You're eventually going to find enough power and you're going to have the ability to concentrate longer and longer as you go along. So thank you so much. I hope you found this to be useful and let me know what you think. Take good care. I'll see you on the next one.